On August 3, 2024, in the murky waters of Sevastopol Harbor, a lethal game of cat and mouse reaches its climax. Ukrainian forces have their sights set on one of Russia's most important naval assets, the improved Kilo-class submarine Rostov-on-Don. As dawn breaks over the Crimean Peninsula, the relative calm is shattered by a barrage of precision-guided munitions. Ukrainian missile forces, coordinating seamlessly with naval units, overwhelm Russian air defenses in a lightning assault. Within moments, explosions rock the harbor, sending plumes of smoke and debris into the air. The pride of the Black Sea Fleet, caught in the maelstrom, is reported to have slipped beneath the waves, taking with it years of naval engineering and a crucial strategic asset. While the sinking of Rostov-on-Don has yet to be confirmed, satellite imagery obtained in the aftermath of the attack reveals serious damage to a makeshift floating dry dock that had been hastily constructed using two barges and a roof-like covering. Reports suggest that the submarine was being worked on at this improvised facility at the time of the attack, making it likely that she sustained significant damage, if not total destruction. This $300 million behemoth, which entered service in 2014, represents the pinnacle of Russia's naval modernization program. Primarily designed for anti-submarine and anti-ship warfare, the Rostov-on-Don also boasts a formidable land attack capability. Its Kaliber cruise missiles, with a range exceeding 1,500 kilometers, have long posed a significant danger to targets throughout Ukraine and even Western Europe. The neutralization of this menacing threat would mark a major victory for Ukrainian forces. Interestingly, this wasn't Rostov-on-Don's first brush with Ukrainian firepower. In September 2023, the submarine suffered significant damage from a strike reportedly carried out using air-launched Storm Shadow or Scalp AG standoff missiles. The fact that it was back in action within a year underscores the importance Russia placed on maintaining its submarine fleet in the Black Sea. While local officials in occupied Crimea maintain a conspicuous silence, the Kremlin's propaganda machine whirs into overdrive, attempting to downplay the attack's significance. Yet the impact reverberates through the Russian military establishment as their enemy grows bolder. In response to this setback, Russia hastily initiated a mass exodus of its remaining naval assets from Crimean ports. Ships and submarines scramble for the relative safety of Novorossiysk and other bases along Russia's Black Sea coast. However, this redeployment, while aimed at preserving the fleet, inadvertently weakens Russia's naval presence in the Western Black Sea. The evolution of Ukraine's long-range attack capabilities presents a significant challenge to Russian military planners, who must now contend with an adversary capable of threatening assets once thought to be beyond reach. As news of the submarine's loss spreads, military analysts debate its broader implications. The removal of this significant threat may allow Ukraine to redistribute its air defense assets, potentially strengthening other critical areas. Moreover, the psychological impact on Russian naval personnel cannot be overstated. The knowledge that even their most sophisticated vessels are vulnerable may lead to more cautious deployments, further eroding Russia's control over the Black Sea. The asymmetric nature of the conflict continues to shape its trajectory, with Ukraine leveraging advanced Western-supplied weapons against Russia's aging but numerous forces. This successful strike may prompt a re-evaluation of naval strategy on both sides, particularly regarding the vulnerability of large, expensive assets to precision land-based systems. As Russia grapples with this new reality, the question is no longer if Ukraine will strike again, but when and where. On August 3, 2024, the skies over Morozovsk Air Base in Russia's Rostov region erupted in flames. On August 3, 2024, the skies over Morozovsk Air Base in Russia's Rostov region erupted in flames. A series of explosions rocked the facility as Ukrainian forces launch a daring strike against one of Russia's key military assets. The target, a weapons storage facility crucial to Russian air operations. Long-range attack drones, piloted with precision from afar, swoop down on the unsuspecting base. Their payload finds its mark with devastating effect, turning the once-secure munitions depot into an inferno. Secondary explosions amplify the destruction as stockpiles of bombs and missiles detonate in a chain reaction. Aerial footage captured in the aftermath reveals a scene of utter devastation. Where once stood a fortified storage site filled with munitions now lies a wasteland of twisted metal and smoldering craters. 
the entire weapons storage area has been obliterated, with not a single structure left standing. The scale of destruction is staggering. Remnants of air-launched munitions litter the ground, telling a story of secondary explosions that amplified the initial strike. Among the wreckage, observers can identify fragments of KB-1500L laser-guided bombs, a weapon rarely seen but potentially devastating in its impact. These three 300-pound behemoths, along with standard Fabi 500 M62 high-explosive bombs and ODAB 500 fuel-air explosive bombs, now lie scattered and useless across the scorched earth. But it's not just offensive weapons that have been destroyed. The attack has also claimed defensive stores used by the Su-34, including R-73 AA-11 Archer heat-seeking air-to-air missiles and Kibini wingtip-mounted electronic warfare pods. This loss severely hampers the ability of Russian aircraft to defend themselves in future combat missions. The Ukrainian Ministry of Defense claims that beyond the destruction of the weapon storage, the attack also damaged or destroyed Su-34 aircraft. While satellite imagery shows signs of damage to aircraft, the limited resolution makes it impossible to confirm these claims definitively. The Su-34, a powerful two-seat fighter bomber, has been responsible for delivering precision strikes against Ukrainian military and infrastructure targets throughout the conflict. Its long range and heavy payload capacity have made it a particularly potent threat, able to strike deep into Ukrainian territory while operating from the relative safety of Russian soil. This attack strikes at the heart of Russia's air campaign in Ukraine. Morozovsk Air Base, located approximately 150 miles from the Ukrainian border, has long been a thorn in the side of Ukrainian military planners. Home to a significant contingent of Su-34 fullback strike aircraft, the base has played a crucial role in Russia's offensive operations. Now, with this successful strike, Ukraine has turned the tables, demonstrating its own ability to reach out and touch critical enemy assets far behind the front lines. The destruction of the weapons storage facility not only depletes Russia's stockpile of munitions, but also sends a clear message. No target is truly safe, no matter how far from the border it may be. This attack wasn't the first time Morozovsk had been targeted. Ukrainian forces had launched at least three drone strikes against the base in the preceding three months. As Russian forces scramble to assess the damage and shore up their defenses, questions arise about the long-term impact of this strike. The loss of such a significant weapons cache will undoubtedly affect Russian air operations in the short term, but the psychological impact may be even more significant. Every Russian pilot taking off from bases near the Ukrainian border will now do so with the knowledge that they are potential targets, not just in the air, but on the ground as well. Many wonder about the long-term implications of this attack. Some commentators suggest Russia might be forced to disperse its munition stores more widely, potentially complicating logistics. Others contemplate how the loss of sophisticated electronic warfare equipment could impact the balance of power in the skies over Ukraine. As the smoke clears over Morozovsk, one thing becomes clear. The rules of engagement have changed, and the war looks set to enter a new, more perilous phase. Ukrainian forces have launched a daring incursion into Russia's Kursk Oblast. During the first week of August 2024, Ukrainian troops moved into territory inside Russian borders, pushing as deep as 10 miles into enemy territory in some areas. The Ukrainian incursion represents a significant escalation in the conflict, bringing the war directly onto Russian soil in a way not seen since the early days of World War II. The operation, reportedly carried out by elements of the Ukrainian armed forces in cooperation with the Security Service of Ukraine and Ukrainian Defense Intelligence, demonstrates a level of planning and coordination that has caught many observers by surprise. The scale of this operation is unprecedented in the conflict. Hundreds of Ukrainian troops, supported by dozens of armored vehicles, including tanks, have poured across the border, creating a pocket of Ukrainian control within Russian territory. The town of Sudza, situated just seven miles from the Ukrainian border, has become the epicenter of fierce fighting, suffering heavy damage as both sides struggle for control. Residents of Kursk Oblast, once far removed from the front lines, now find themselves in the midst of a war zone. One inhabitant of Sudza is recorded as saying, quote, We are losing everything dear that remains in our city and our beloved city itself. 
The sudden eruption of combat on Russian soil has forced a hasty evacuation, with over 1,000 civilians fleeing the area, including more than 300 seeking refuge in temporary accommodation. The Ukrainian forces have made significant gains in their push into Russian territory. Reports indicate that they have advanced to the outskirts of Leonidovka along the rilsk sudja highway and have established control over several settlements, including Obukhovskaya, Pokrovsky, Tolstoy Lug, and Lubimovka. In a strategic coup, Ukrainian troops have also captured the Suja gas metering station, a critical infrastructure point for Russian gas exports to Europe. Russian attempts to repel the incursion have been hampered by reports of communication jamming and disrupted cellular signals. This electronic warfare component of the Ukrainian operation has further complicated Russian efforts to coordinate an effective response. The use of Stuka dive bomber UAVs by Ukrainian forces further complicates the battlefield and demonstrates Ukraine's growing prowess in integrating various unmanned systems into its operations. Russia's response to this move by Ukraine has been robust but seemingly inadequate. President Vladimir Putin, in a brief address, decried the attack for involving indiscriminate shelling of civilian targets, referring to it as, quote, another massive provocation. The Russian Defense Ministry claims to be continuing to destroy the enemy, but their assurances ring hollow as Ukrainian forces continue to hold their positions within Russian territory. The incursion has exposed vulnerabilities in Russia's border defenses and raised questions about their military readiness. Reports of Russian troops abandoning their positions and fleeing Sudza as Ukrainian forces approached have surfaced, contradicting official statements that the situation is under control. Unlike previous cross-border raids carried out by pro-Ukrainian Russian partisan groups, this incursion directly involves the armed forces of Ukraine. The audacity and scale of the attack have caught many observers by surprise, demonstrating Ukraine's growing confidence and operational capabilities. As the conflict within Kursk Oblast continues to unfold, its broader implications are becoming apparent. The incursion forces Russia to divert significant resources to defend its own territory, potentially weakening its positions along the main front lines in Ukraine. It also serves as a powerful psychological blow, bringing the reality of war home to the Russian population in a way that cannot be easily dismissed by state media. The duration of Ukraine's foothold in Russian territory remains uncertain, as does the true nature of their ultimate objectives. This audacious incursion could be a temporary raid aimed at destroying key infrastructure and gathering crucial intelligence. Alternatively, it might signal the beginning of a more permanent Ukrainian presence on Russian soil, fundamentally altering the dynamics of the conflict. As both sides continue to pour resources into this unexpected battleground, the world watches with bated breath. The outcome of this bold gambit could dramatically reshape the contours of the ongoing war, potentially setting the stage for an even more intense and unpredictable phase of the conflict. The ramifications of this incursion will likely reverberate far beyond the immediate battlefield, influencing military strategies, diplomatic efforts, and the delicate balance of power in the region for months, if not years, to come.